G'day. I'm fascinated by the era of the great airships, the Zeppelins, uh, Graf Zeppelin and the Hindenburg and uh, others of that ilk. And I encourage you to uh, watch some of the videos. Of course, the very, very famous one of the, the crash, the burning of the Hindenburg, but also the successful flights, of which there were many, and uh, learn a little bit about the kinds of journeys that were carried out across the Atlantic and all over the place. Um, there are people trying to revive the airships. There are some modern aircraft being built and tested out uh, using helium rather than hydrogen to make it safer so we don't have a repeat of the Hindenburg uh, catastrophe. But It's extraordinary how much mass can be lifted by a sufficiently great volume uh, of lighter than air material. Now, of course, the most effective balloon we could possibly have would be one containing an absolute vacuum. In other words, if we could create a space that pushed all the air out of the road, so there was absolutely no mass inside, we would get the best lift of all. And the challenge is to put the lightest gas we can inside. And that's why, of course, they went for hydrogen. It was relatively cheap to produce uh, and is the lightest gas we possible. And um, it just happens to be very dangerous. Um, helium is four times the density of hydrogen, but much, much safer. So we need correspondingly larger aircraft to lift the same mass. But I thought it would be interesting, just reflecting on this, to give you an idea of just how much mass there is in air. We move our arms and run in the air. We do notice when we're running into a wind that, yes, the air exerts some pressure. Uh, as a young boy, I used to sail quite a lot on the local river and uh, used to enjoy... Uh, sail along at quite some speed with a good wind. Uh, wind can exert pressure and if you've certainly lived through a cyclone or a tornado or a hurricane or something like that, um, you can realise just how destructive moving air can be. Extraordinarily so. Terrifyingly so. And uh, of course, the whole reason that aircraft fly is we manage to get a sufficient volume of air passing over and under the wings of an aircraft uh, to create vacuums in the right place and thrust and lift in the right place to, uh, to lift very, very heavy vehicles off the ground and travel quite long distances with them. So here's an experiment for you to consider. Imagine that we have the Eiffel Tower and we can, from the four corners of the, of the base, we can erect vertical struts, the full height of the tower, and enclose the tower in a large square prism or cuboid. Now, if we do that, here are the dimensions. I'm not going to try and draw the Eiffel Tower, but if we, uh, I'll, I'll just sort of do a moderate kind of jog here. Okay, the Eiffel Tower is 125 metres by 125 metres by, now the original structure is about 300.5 or 300.65 metres tall, but they've since put a television aerial on the top, which makes the height of the tower about 324 metres. So we would have a very large box, and if we could pump, all the air out and weigh it. So if we can actually weigh that mass of air, let's work out what it's worth. Well, first we need to know the volume. Now the volume is pretty easy. It's length by breadth by height. So it's 125 by 125 by 324. Did you just notice that's 18 squared? Probably not. I don't know. But I definitely need my calculator for this because 
Well, that is 5 cubed and 5 cubed, which is 5 to the 6th power, which makes it, well, we get 125 squared times 18 squared. 18 times 125 and square the lot. I don't want to do that in my head. So, 125 by 125 by 324 gives me a volume of 5062500 cubic metres of air. Just over 5 million cubic metres of air. Surprising. But for those of you who have visited the Eiffel Tower, La Tour Eiffel, uh, like my wife, I haven't been there, but my wife's been to the top, well, at least not to the top of the area, but to the top viewing platform. Uh, had a lovely time in Paris. Uh, it's a large structure. And please use this as an opportunity to read up about Gustav Eiffel, and uh, who, who also, by the way, built the Statue of Liberty, uh, of which there is a replica or, or a, a replica, a, a small copy in the Seine in Paris. Uh, so the one over in New York is not the only one in the world. But uh, yeah, fascinating man and some great architecture. But here it is. How much does this weigh? Well, the problem is that as you heat air, it expands, and as you cool it, it contracts. So its density, how much you pack into a cubic metre, changes with temperature. But at about 20 degrees, which is a comfortable day, uh, every cubic metre of air weighs about 1.2 kilograms. So I'll put here mass. The mass of this air is going to be this by 1.20 kilograms, roughly. I should say these are rough as well, but anyway. Uh, do I still have that number? I still have that number in my calculator, so I multiply by 1.2. Now I get 6075000 kilograms. And you might remember how many kilograms make a ton? A thousand. So it is 6075 tons. Of air. Does that surprise you? That's extraordinary. Uh, if an average car, to, I don't know what an average car today weighs, let's say it's about 1.5 tonnes, uh, if I divide by 1.5, I get about just over 4,000 cars. So if you can imagine a large uh, parking area covered with 4,000 cars, I suggest you go to a few parking areas and just try and estimate how large an area that would be. That's the weight, or the mass at least, of the air inside this container. Now, interestingly, if you stripped all the, um, the rooms and the lifts and the linings out of the tower and just left the structure itself, the structure, I believe, the mass of the Eiffel Tower, is about 7,300 tonnes. Which says this, if you could put a box around the Eiffel Tower, or put a box like that above it, and pump all the air out, all of it, you would almost generate enough lift to lift the tower off the ground. We're 1,300 tonnes short but we're a large percentage of the way there. Uh, I might leave it as an interesting exercise for you to work out how much larger the dimensions would have to be. What percentage you would increase each dimension by. I think you would be amazed at how small it is. But I'll leave that as an exercise. Not a great deal of difference between them. And that is stunning that the mass of air surrounding La Tour Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower, is almost the same as the mass of the steel out of which it is built. And that is an extraordinary thing. So, just some reflections on these large airships and Zeppelins 
um, and the kind of carrying capacity they have, or lifting capacity that they have. They do, of course, have to be extraordinarily large to do it, and uh, that creates all sorts of interesting engineering and technological challenges. But I hope you read about them with interest. And I don't think I want to share any more about that. It's just an interesting thought about a very large tourist attraction in Europe, in France. And I thank you for watching. Thank you.